Praxis Prepper. Everybody, this is Praxis, and today we are processing a bunch of groceries that just came from the grocery store. Uh, if you go to the grocery store now, it's safe to just presume that kind of everything is contaminated with coronavirus. It may not be, it probably isn't, but if you don't want to get sick, it's safer to just kind of presume things are and clean them as though that they are. And that's what Amber and I are doing right now. We got a number of bags here and we're taking things out of the bags and anything that needs to be cleaned, Amber's kind of processing. We've got a mix of bleach and water in here and some rags and she's just wiping down anything that needs to go into the refrigerator. We're not messing with things that don't need to be refrigerated because there's a lot easier way of cleaning those, which is to not clean them, to just leave the virus on there and let mother nature do its thing and just kill them by letting them sit there. That's what all these are right here. We have uh, pretzels, we have chips, and uh, I think at the bottom there's some potatoes, some onions, anything that we don't have to put in the refrigerator. We're just bagging up, put it down in the basement, and we're leaving it there. What have we been doing? Like a couple of weeks? Yeah. I think. Like yeah, I mean, some recommendations are suggesting, you know, up to 72 hours is as long as the virus can last on something. I've seen nine days, I've seen longer than that. You know, the information is still coming out. It's still somewhat unreliable. The virus could be mutating and maybe there are some strains that die after 72 hours. Maybe there are some strains that can last longer. So we're erring on the side of caution and it's really not that big a deal because all of this stuff is completely discretionary. We didn't need to get anything from the grocery store. We've got plenty of stuff in our pantry. And the only reason actually that we got any of this at all is that a friend of mine was going to the grocery store today. I, I just checked in with him and said, hey, you know, we were uh, getting low on like things that we totally don't need, like ice cream <laughs> you know, or yogurt or, you know, things like that, that, you know, are nice. And River certainly appreciates those kinds of things. But, uh, you know, they're not at all necessary. We're not going to starve to death. Uh, but since he was going anyway, I said, hey, you know, can I pay you for your trouble? Drop some stuff off. He did that. And we're kind of going through all that kind of stuff. But none of this stuff necessarily needs to be eaten right away, especially all this. So this stuff can just be throw in our pantry and we'll you know kind of deal with it later if you're going to do this kind of approach there are some precautions that you should take you know as you bring stuff in first ideally this would be a great thing to do outside because you know things are getting thrown up in the air as you can see amber's got her mask on already i've got my mask ready to go here uh but you know today it's kind of like off and on with rain and stuff so we decided to do it in here we've got a piece of cardboard down you could use any kind of a sheet or covering over your table but something to kind of protect your table surface or just do it on the table and then bleach clean it afterwards um in addition to n95 masks, i'm probably gonna put mine right on right now because amber is sort of throwing stuff up in the air as we go this is a reused cleaned sanitized N95 mask. If you want a video about how to clean and sanitize your mask, here are the best practices at the moment. You can click on that link and find out how we've been sanitizing these so you can reuse them. Uh, when you put on a mask, it's good to check to make sure you have a good seal. You know, you pinch on the metal around the nose to make sure it's down there. With me with a, a really pronounced nose, I can get leaks up here. The way to test for it is put your hands around and kind of do a puff out and if you can feel any air coming out the sides, then you know you, that you, know, you have a gap there. This feels pretty good, so we can dive right in. Also, you want your hands uh, and arms to be clear, like don't have long sleeves or anything, because uh, then when you're reaching in, you, know, you want to be able to wash up your arms later. Amber's using gloves, because when you're working with bleach, bleach is very, um, well, it's uncomfortable, really, when it gets on your hands for a while, it makes them dry and cracked. Amber's wearing gloves. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll use gloves, sometimes I won't use gloves, um, and it, it does tend to dry my hands out. One thing I've been using to try to keep my hands from getting really dry and cracked is aloe, aloe vera, uh, and I've got them all over the house. There's three behind you, behind the camera there. I got three in the other room there. It's a great item for so many different things, but it's just great for healing up, you know, cracked, dry skin. I would use it a lot whenever I do concrete work as well because of the caustic lie, uh, lie in, the, uh, in, the, in the cement. So we're just continuing to go through these, uh, through these. And again, the things that need to be cleaned, we're cleaning. And the things that we can avoid are being put here. There are going to be some items, though, that we're not necessarily going to want to bleach. Like, for example, fruits and vegetables. Uh, you know, we've got some eggplants in here. There's some celery in, the, in the, uh, some of these places. Now, there are different ways of sanitizing that type of thing. But my favorite is a UV sterilization box. 
I've got one, I bought it specifically for mail coming into the house, but it's really useful for a lot of things. I have done my own tests on it, it is effective, uh, but make sure you check out how to use it. Again, video link up above, you can check that out. Uh, I find it really useful for things that you don't want to soap, you don't want to bleach, you can't bake them. It's a very useful uh, device for sanitizing anything like that. So that's it. If you go out to a grocery store and you bring stuff back, it's a really good idea to sanitize it, make everything safe. One thing that we're not using here, although Amber kind of is, is goggles would be kind of, uh, you know, something you might want to get into. But I, I think uh, we're not using goggles because I'm, I'm not anticipating there's a lot going to be flying off. Even the N95 mask might be a little bit overkill. But, you know, when you're going in here, I just don't want anything to uh, be throwing up into the air, becoming airborne, especially when you have anything with a bag, because it's, it's uh, uh, it can blow a lot of just particles, dust, whatever, out of it. If you push the sides of the bag, suddenly it's just, it's a kind of a gust going up. So we're being cautious with that type of thing, but that is one other thing. Gloves, mask, goggles, if you want to do the whole thing, and you could do coveralls as well. With our clothes, we just, you know, clean them and wash them. That's it. Good luck, and thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.